you probably would not believe me if I just straight up told you that the Creative Katana V2 is currently one of the best gaming soundbars out there. You're right to not believe me for now, but if you're currently looking for a soundbar to use mainly for gaming, then watch on to find out why I think that this is one of the best choices on the market right now. Hi, what's up everybody, I'm Edward. In today's video, I'll be going through the unboxing, specifications, and sharing my usage experience with the Creative Sound Blaster Katana V2. And even though the Katana V2 is a little expensive at $350, having spent 5 months with this gaming soundbar, I'm extremely satisfied with all the features and its performance. Well, except for one small thing which I'll point out towards the end of today's video. So, feel free to jump around with the timestamps below and hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel and let me help you to decide why you should consider the Katana V2 over other gaming soundbars in the market today. Upon opening the box, you'll find that everything is very well packaged inside to prevent any damage during transportation. Taking out the contents of the box, you'll find the soundbar which feels surprisingly heavy for its size, a wall mounting kit screws, should you want to wall mount it under a TV, a 72 watts power brick, a few plugs for different countries, a slightly short USB A to C cable for connecting to your PC that measures at 1.2 meters long, a nice looking remote, an optical cable, and finally, the subwoofer with a non-removable auxiliary cable that measures at 2.1 meters long. The Katana V2 soundbar is made mostly from plastic with the front tweeter meshes made from metal, but it feels very solid and well built as expected from a creative product. The top plastic has this nice brushed aluminum like texture which adds a premium look to it and had me fooled at first glance thinking that it was aluminum. But unfortunately, being plastic, it is also susceptible to scratches if you are not careful. As for the size, I personally think Creative did an excellent job in the design of the Katana V2. Measuring at 600mm wide by 65mm tall and 95mm deep, it can easily fit under most computer monitors and TVs without blocking off a part of the screen. As for the subwoofer, it is made from pressed wood and houses one sub driver. Measuring 150mm wide by 367mm tall and deep, it can easily fit into tight spaces underneath your table. But because of the rather limited short cable, you cannot really experiment with different subwoofer placement to get the best bass response. Moving back to the soundbar, you'll find a large variety of connectivity options at your disposal for multiple audio sources, which I will list out in the specification section. And on the front of the Katana V2, you'll find an LCD screen with a headphone jack which utilizes the powerful built-in amplifier and sex chip. Yeah, I know. But that's really how the soundbar reads it. Please use the Sexfy app to personalize your device for the best. So, talking about the Super X5 chip, which I'm gonna call from now on, I gotta say that from a first time experience, it's very, very, very impressive. What it does is that it allows you to utilize the two Super X5 modes that is specially tuned by Creative for enhancing in game audio cues and immersing you in the amazing virtual surround when you plug in a headset. You begin by downloading the Super XV app and then scanning your ear to create a custom ear profile which is then uploaded to the Katana V2. Afterwards, plug in any headphone and hear your in-game world come to life around you. To give you an example, with the battle mode in Call of Duty, I was literally able to hear bullet casings falling in the floor in front of me or bullets flying past me and hitting the walls behind me. It's with such clarity that I've never experienced before on a headset. And partially contributing to this experience was thanks to the very capable, high-performance drivers on the Hecate G5BT wireless headset that Edifier sent over to me to try. The Edifier Hecate G5BT headset is a wireless gaming headset that features a super low latency connection of 45 milliseconds over Bluetooth designed for eSports use. Equipped with two 40mm titanium-coated drivers and with 25 years of tuning experience from Edifier, the G5BT is able to deliver an accurate and high quality gaming audio experience on its own. When coupled with the Super XV chip in the Katana V2, the G5BT was able to reproduce the virtual surround emulation accurately in wired mode thanks to the very capable drivers having a wide frequency response from 20Hz to 40kHz, which is also more than what the usual gaming headsets can deliver. And because that they are also high res audio certified, 
This means that this headset is capable of delivering lossless audio with more details and greater clarity, especially in games that do support it. And if you need more positional audio accuracy in FPS games, you can switch over to the G5BT scheme mode to utilize the built-in Edge Pass, which is a specially tuned EQ profile to help you identify and locate the direction of footsteps and gunshots more easily. With its 40 hours battery life, retractable cardioid mic, and extremely comfortable ear cushions, the Edifier Hakate G5BT is a great choice for gaming with great audio. And if you game a lot on the go, its foldable design lets you easily bring it along with you without needing to worry about its durability as the headset is reinforced with a metal strap. So check out the link in the description below for more details. But no matter which headset you choose to use with the Katana V2, as long as the drivers are capable of good audio separation, then you will feel the immersion delivered by the Super XV chip. All right, enough about the built-in chip. Let's see what makes this soundbar so good for gaming. The soundbar itself is powered by two 1.3-inch upward-firing tweeters and two 2.5-inch front-firing speakers that together with a 5.25-inch subwoofer can deliver sounds from 20Hz to 20kHz. All these speakers are each powered by separate amplifier, hence the triamplified term on the box, and each have their own DSP chip to give you the cleanest sound across the whole sound space. The Katana V2's total power output has also been increased by almost double of that of the first Katana soundbar to 252 watts, so that's going to be more than enough for indoor use as I rarely even use the soundbar above 25% loudness. As for the connectivity options available, the Katana V2 can accept audio inputs via USB for PC and laptops, optical in, 3.5mm auxiliary in, Bluetooth 5.0, and a personal favorite HDMI port with audio return channel making it extremely useful for hooking up to a TV connected to all my gaming consoles. Though it's a pity that Creative didn't include ER here, so there's not going to be any losses Dolby True HD and DTSX. There's also a Super X5 out USB port for use with Creative's wireless Super X5 headphones like the Super X5 Air if you want to enjoy Creative's virtual surround. There's also two built-in beam forming mics which sound okay for basic calls when you're lazy to hook up a headset or a dedicated mic, and they block out the sound coming from the soundbar while in use reasonably well. As for the beautiful diffuse RGB strip under the soundbar, it comes with seven customizable zones, which you can choose your own colors and effects via the mobile or desktop app. Your custom lighting effects can also be stored on the soundbar's onboard memory, so you can cycle through them via the remote at a later time. So having used the Creative Sound Blaster Katana V2 for the past five months, I would be lying that if I didn't say that I absolutely love this gaming soundbar. And no, this is not a sponsored review by Creative. Out of the box, the soundbar sounds so-so like an average soundbar, but the moment I switched to one of the preset audio modes, it sounded amazing for a $350 soundbar, at times even better than my $1,000 soundbar downstairs. You'll be happy to know that if you don't like the preset sound profiles, you can also tune your own with the EQ in the app, though it cannot really play lossless high res music unless you plug in the headphone, so if you're an audiophile, a good set of bookshelf speakers will be the better choice. With movie and game modes, the bass was so powerful that it rattled my table and sometimes the window of my 20 square meters gaming room. In fact, I kind of find the bass of the Katana V2 a little bit too powerful that I had to lower the subwoofer volume by 2 in order to not feel overwhelmed by it. As for the in-game virtual surround and Dolby audio in movies, it's customizable to some extent via the app, but you will only really experience the surround if you are sitting directly in front of the soundbar. I have tried using it for while sitting around 4 meters away and still can sort of hear the virtual surround, but the optimal distance would be no more than 2 meters. From my experience, the positional audio was only accurate for the front 180 degrees, and anything coming from the rear doesn't really sound like it's coming from behind me. But that's to be expected from soundbars as that is reserved for true 5.1 and 7.1 surround setups. Though, like previously mentioned, you can always plug in a headphone to utilize the powerful Super XV DSP chip that is built into the soundbar to experience true surround. Now, as for the one small thing that prevented me from giving the Sound Blaster Katana V2 a perfect full score, it would be that the Katana V2 has trouble waking up from its auto sleep sometimes. I don't know if it's just my unit, but once in a while after automatically going into power saving mode, the Katana V2 will not auto power back on itself. and Pressing the power button will not turn it off or on. The only way to power it back on was to do a full power cycle by unplugging and replugging in the soundbar, which is a bit annoying. And for my nitpicks, 
is that I wish the subwoofer was wireless and that I could disable the auto input source switching so that it would not keep switching sources itself when more than one input source is powered on. But other than this, overall, the Soundblaster Katana V2 is a feature-packed and great sounding soundbar that is perfectly made for gaming and media consumption, well, at least it was for me. At $350, it might be a hard swallow, but if you're currently in the market for a compact soundbar that will fit nicely on your desk or in your gaming room, then I highly recommend to add this to your list of candidates. And if by now, after hearing me ramble on about my 5 months experience with the Katana V2, you're still not convinced that this is one of the best gaming soundbars out there, then there are also these other gaming soundbars which you can check out. Alright, thank you guys as always for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or in my Discord channel and I'll try my best to answer all of them. And if you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button as it will help me and help this channel a lot more than you know it. And I'll see you again in the next video. Ciao!